You're basic. It's a human insult. It's devastating. If you want to burn someone so badly you dismiss their entire identity, you call them basic. Honestly, I resent being called basic. It's an insult leveled at someone unforgivably bland, whose interests are dictated entirely by what's trendy or in mainstream fashion. Those are so last season. And whose personality is no personality at all. Hi, everybody. My name is Stacy. Uh, my hobbies include cuticle care and the e-network. In the peak of the label's popularity in the early 2010s, being a basic suggested a recognizable constellation of mainstream likes, such as pumpkin spice lattes. I'll have a Trenta no foam five shot half cap no foam pumpkin spice latte with no foam at 210 degrees. Yoga pants or the TV show Friends. I can't believe we ignored the signs, all the Zoom book classes, the inspirational quote in my email signature. Paninis from Panera Bread. But since the main identifier is an adherence to whatever's popular, the signifiers of basic change with the times and the trends. My basic bitch is just someone who likes what's typical of life. Today, for example, the embodiment of basic is the Visco Girl, named after the photography app, who is a modern update to the basic girl of the 2010s and faces much of the same belittlement. Whatever she may be into at any given moment, the basic bitch is disdained for being, as various urban dictionary definitions put it, an extra regular female, overly generic, or typical and a dime a dozen. Fat, the true basic bitch. On screen, we can spot the basic girl in movies and shows old and new through her love of trendy fashion, brand name items. Oh no, you don't understand. This is an Alaya. An a what? -a? <sighs> like a totally important designer. Or pop culture. Oh my god, I have so much to tell you! Really? Yes, Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, they had a baby and they named it Surrey. She's conventional and cares about how others perceive her, a trait that today can materialize in a borderline obsessive love of social media. Stories about this kind of character have long reinforced a common message. Being the basic girl is bad. But we don't hate basic people, it's just that their taste is defined by what everyone else is into. More recently, though, stories are starting to question this assumption. You're right. I am a basic bitch with a bad charm. Is unselfconsciously enjoying mainstream interests really as terrible as pop culture has long made it out to be? Here's our take on why it's time to embrace being basic, if that's who you really are. I'm super basic. I give in to all my base instincts and I've never felt more like myself. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an incredible online learning community made up of millions of lifelong learners. The first 1,000 take viewers to use the link in our description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, so check it out now and start exploring your creativity. You basic. The basic bitch term was first added to Urban Dictionary in 2009, attributed to comedians Lil Duval and YouTuber Spoken Reasons, who painted this figure as fake or inauthentic. If you bend your ass over in all your pictures just to make it look big knowing that you ain't got one, use a basic bitch. To be basic wasn't necessarily female to start. Rappers like Tyga and Lil Wayne declared that they were not basic. Don't compare me to no basic bitch. I thank God that I am not basic. In 2011, Creation's song Gucci Gucci cemented the basic bitch in the popular vocabulary as someone who was obsessed with popular brands. Hey, Gucci, Gucci, And in 2012, teen internet star Lohanthony, known for his viral video on the subject, calling all the basic bitches, defined the basic bitch as someone who does what everyone else is doing and isn't their own person at all. The early to mid 2010s were peak basic, with searches for basic hitting an all time high in 2014, the year of the popular college humor video, How to Tell If You're a Basic Bitch. Probably contracted your basic bitchness from a sorority sister. Borrow some Ugg boots here and there. Experiment with North Face. And the Vogue article in which Emma Stone embraced being called a bland basic bitch. What's the first thing you did this morning? 
Mm, meditated. In these years, an online obsession grew with defining signs of the basic bitch and how to tell if you were or knew or were dating one. You're into scented candles, you order your bagel scooped, and then you own a picture frame that says family on it. While the concept originated in the black community, If you're a black girl and your weave is red, green, purple, or blonde, you the basic bitch. It evolved to take on more white, preppy connotations, being associated with a fondness for brands like Hollister and Abercrombie and, of course, Starbucks. Two years later, we're tweeting about Starbucks. Hashtag cafe. As the cut identifies, other basic characteristics included reading Jody Pico, wearing pink Red Sox gear, drinking skinny girl margarita drinks, watching The Notebook, and citing faux Marilyn Monroe quotes. In 2010, celebrity gossip blog Oh No They Didn't released the post Basic Bitches 101, which compiled a list of basic female actors and musicians and defined basic traits as things like looking virtually interchangeable, being famous for doing something else than what they originally entered the entertainment business for, or using someone else's success as a catalyst for their own. People call me my sister's name all yeah. the time, and I'm like, my hair is very different than hers. In 2013, Ms. Not Right Now wrote that basic is an uncanny ability to aspire to mediocrity. On-screen stories about the basic girl tend to suggest that basicness is a condition to be overcome, a waypoint on the road to some realer, more worthy individuality. Typically, if the basic girl is pitched as the protagonist or a likable supporting character, she outgrows her basicness. Yes, love that journey for me. In Leap Year, the protagonist, Anna, begins the movie embodying the more negative aspects of basicness. She's kind of boring. You know I don't like surprises. Rigidly conventional. No, 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 that's, that's not going to work for me. And obsessed with superficial ideas of feminine success. I'm not gonna die without getting engaged. Her story centers around becoming more interesting as she comes to realize she wants something more original out of life than the perfect apartment with the perfect rich doctor husband. I had everything I ever wanted, but nothing I really needed. Another character who shows the deep connections between basicness and privilege is Schitt's Creek's Alexis Rose. I'm expensive sushi. I'm a cute, huge yacht. I'm a little bit single, even when I'm not. When we meet her, money and status are the foundations of rich girl Alexis's whole identity, so she hasn't learned to prize individuality or genuine self-knowledge. It's only when she loses her comfortable lifestyle and is forced to suddenly survive regular life. Lots of doors open up for pretty people. Mm hmm clearly as I register for community service. <laughs> that she can discover who she really is and journey out of the condition of being basic. A part of me feels like I'm almost glad that we lost the money. Outgrowing basic can sometimes be accomplished by simply choosing a love interest with perceived depth. Bianca in 10 Things I Hate About You starts off as basic. There's a difference between like and love because I like my sketchers, but I love my Prada backpack. Until she demonstrates growth by falling for a guy who isn't popular or shallow. You know, just because you're beautiful, that doesn't mean that you can treat people like they don't matter. Torrance from Bring It On likewise outgrows her basicness by leaning into her creativity and becoming aware of her white privilege. Y'all have been coming up here for years trying to steal our routines. While also choosing a love interest who's seen as deep and alternative. So, is that your band or something? Clash? In stories like these, basicness is a flaw that needs fixing. It can't just be a normal or neutral aspect of a character's personality. And characters who don't outgrow their basicness are shown in a negative light. He's all yours. Very generous, princess. And just so you know, Joey only liked you for one reason. He even had a bet going with his friends. But if you look more closely at these characters, it's not actually their basicness that's the problem. It's that their basicness is painted as entwined with a host of truly negative qualities, like being privileged. Over my rich, hot, dead body. Vain. I cannot wait to visit Ryan in prison. I'm gonna wear my hottest tracksuit and get my hair done and then be like, hi, Ryan. Gossip obsessed. We cut out girls' pictures from the yearbook and then we wrote comments. Or cruel. 
most people are losers. There isn't necessarily an actual correlation between any of those traits and basicness, though. Take The Office's Kelly Kapoor, a model basic girl. Her basicness is reflected in her bubbly extroversion and obsessive knowledge of pop culture. Beyonce, pink the color, pink the person, hot dogs, basically anything that is awesome. Snow cones. Meanwhile, she's also manipulative. Basically, nobody does anything for me anymore unless I threaten to kill myself. Self-involved. My resolution was to get more attention. And hooked on drama. If I was you, I would just like freak out and get really drunk and then tell someone I was pregnant. But these qualities aren't a result of her being basic. Eleanor Shellstrop is a bad person at the start of The Good Place, and she's basic. I'm gonna sit alone in my house, watching wedding fails on YouTube, drinking margaritas through a Twizzler straw. So we might be tempted to associate her basicness with her amorality. But the problem isn't her basic tastes, it's that she lacks purpose, moral principles, and concern for others. See that hot bartender over there? He's into me, and we're gonna bang it out. The bad news is it means I can't drive you guys home. Even after she outgrows her negative qualities and even adopts a few more obscure interests like moral philosophy, You think just because I'm a straight hottie I can't read philosophy for fun? Eleanor retains her love of all things basic. Out of all the human stuff I've been able to experience in this neighborhood, nachos, number one, easy. As well as her basic girl's exuberant self-confidence. It's not a joke, I'm a legit snack. So she demonstrates that a basic girl can even save all of humankind from eternal damnation without renouncing her fundamental basicness. You basic. From the start, the appeal of calling someone else basic seemed to be a pronouncement of your own unbasicness. I called you basic, but I coughed over it because I'm embarrassed for you. As BuzzFeed writer Anne Helen Peterson observed, basic is at bottom a stereotype. And like all stereotypes, we fling it at others in order to distance ourselves from them. Do you know how many basic bitches would kill? to have the same personality as me. The opposite of the basic bitch is the original and daring bad bitch. You'll never be a bad bitch. And on screen, too, the desire to be anything but basic has resulted in tropes such as the not-like-other-girls girl, who prides herself on the sort of individuality that basic girls presumably lack. The film This Congeniality challenges this mentality through its main character, Gracie, who reflexively dismisses the kind of typically girly and conventional girls who compete in beauty pageants. I'm not gonna parade around in a swimsuit like some airhead bimbo. In the end, Gracie comes to appreciate that being like other girls isn't all that bad. These women are smart, terrific people who are just trying to make a difference in the world. Whether you identify as a basic bitch, a bad bitch, or a not-like-other-girls girl, though, it can often feel like there's no way to win. You're perceived as either mindlessly following trends or pretending to be different by rejecting them. You're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. And while at first the basic label might just feel like a harmless joke, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's almost only targeted at young women. The basic guy, essentially a bro, mostly escapes heated criticism. Doctor, that's impossible. Uh, only bitches can be basic. And it so happens that basic traits commonly coincide with traditionally feminine characteristics. Urban Dictionary's definition of the basic bitch even describes her as upholding the status quo and stereotypes of their gender without even realizing it. In other words, contempt for the basic girl may be rooted in sexism. I get called a girly girl like it's a bad thing, so I'm double the amount of girl, and somehow that's not feminist. The fear of being shamed for having mainstream interests can restrict young women from being themselves during that time when they're figuring out who they are, what they like, and how they want to express themselves. In a Teen Vogue article, Jackie Velling recounts a story of deciding whether to wear Ugg boots to work. There was this unshakable feeling that wearing these boots would somehow erode the carefully cultivated image I had created for myself as a smart, professional, serious employee. I didn't want to be seen as one of those girls. You know, the basic kind. Any tips on what to wear? Not that. There are some upsides to letting yourself be a little bit basic. The basic person's mainstream interests allow her to find bigger communities of people who enjoy similar things. We're cheerleaders! We are cheerleaders! 
And if there's a great show, movie, song, or clothing item that everyone's loving, someone basic gets to shamelessly enjoy that without overthinking it. I'm a basic, basic, basic bitch. If this karaoke, I'm singing Taylor Swift. You might say the ability to consume media without feeling the need to be critical is one of the basic girl's superpowers. Even more than the bad bitch, perhaps the truest opposite of the basic girl is the hipster, the character who automatically rejects everything mainstream, often going to unnecessary lengths simply to be viewed as different. I really only listen to like German death reggae and Halloween sound effects records from the 1950s. Ironically, the hipster's tastes can be just as dictated by what's popular. So you would never do what a basic person does. No! Oh, so your taste is also defined by what everybody else does. But the basic girl can actually be more content and confident in herself than the hipster or the not-like-other-girls girl because she's not plagued with self-consciousness. The entire city looks like ratatouille. One of the key traits of the basic girl is often that she thinks she and her life are pretty great. You guys, I'm like really smart now. You don't even know. Returning to that treasure trove of slang, Urban Dictionary, their basic bitch is described as tragically slash laughably unaware of her utter lack of specialness and intrigue. She believes herself to be unique, fly, amazing, and a complete catch when really she is boring, painfully normal, and par. Do you have like a gauzy curtains and a sign that says dream? Yeah, how, how did you guys know that? <laughs> but who is this objective observer that gets to declare the basic girl is not as amazing as she feels. If her experiences feel special to her, isn't that good enough? Because to be basic is to like what's popular, often basic is used as a shorthand for lacking personality. But what if the basic person actually likes those popular things? Why should she hide that? So what kind of music do you like? I don't know, uh, Michelle Branch, Matchbox 20. Jeez. Following trends doesn't necessarily mean you're mindless. It can just be a way to discover new interests that come highly recommended by others. And having common tastes doesn't automatically devalue someone or mean they don't have depth. I have other interests besides shopping. Indeed, in The Office, Kelly has more personality than almost any other member of The Office. Who am I? I'm Kelly Kapoor, the business bitch. Likewise, Cher in Clueless is a textbook basic girl in that she likes fashion, makeovers, believes popularity is a measure of worth. I'm gonna take that lost soul in there and make her well-dressed and popular. And is at times quite shallow. What'd you do in school today? I broke in my purple clogs. However, she's still compelling, creative, and smart. I've tried everything to convince them of my scholastic aptitude, but I was brutally rebuffed. At the end of the movie, Cher and her friends are still being totally basic, talking about planning their weddings and fighting for a wedding bouquet, but it's clear that Cher has no shortage of intellect or personality outside of her basicness. Likewise, in Legally Blonde, another underestimated blonde, Elle Woods, may love shopping and mani-pedis, but that doesn't mean she can't top her class at Harvard Law. How did you know that Chutney was lying? Because she's brilliant, of course. The rules of hair care are simple and finite. Any Cosmo girl would have known. In recent shows, we're at last seeing basicness incorporated as a neutral or even positive trait in characters. You're basic. All day. Urgent. Shows like The Characters and Emily in Paris acknowledge a new phenomenon, being proud of basicness. Calling me basic is a compliment. Emily in Paris's main character is initially marginalized for her love of brands, her social media savviness, and her perceived basicness. What does bring guard mean? He means basic. He called you a basic bitch. But it's these same qualities that allow her to save the day, winning her the respect and affection of even her snobbiest French colleagues. Almost 200,000 likes, not bad. This change in attitudes is reflected in writer Daisy Buchanan's article for The Guardian about why she's proud to be a basic bitch. Quote, We've reached a tipping point where there is something incredibly refreshing about admitting that you love what is popular. In fact, do you, do you want to know why I got that bag charm? Because my friends and I were obsessed with Gossip Girl. We all wanted to be Serena Vanderwoodson. Both on screen and off, it's time that we realize basic is nothing to be ashamed of. Basic is beautiful. Whether you love learning TikTok dances, can't help but keep Taylor Swift on your playlists, or keep a spare pair of Lululemon leggings in the back of your closet, at some point or another, there's something common and mainstream you won't be able to resist. And that's just fine. You've got a thing for Taylor Swift. I know, because my Mac picks up your Mac's library. We're so careful. 
While popularity is of course not the only measure of quality, it's also true that certain figures or creations become popular because they have genuine merit or undeniable appeal. Paris is romantic. Christmas lights make small, depressing rooms feel warm and welcoming. And live, laugh, love is great advice for anybody. The basic girl reflects a mindset that we could all work towards. She does what makes her happy. Do you know why people wear Uggs, Riley? Because they're super freaking comfortable. Instead of needlessly avoiding anything because of what others think, she's happy to open up her Candy Crush app, retake her favorite BuzzFeed quiz, or sit down to binge Sex and the City for the millionth time. At her best, the basic girl is true to herself, and if that makes her boring, she doesn't really care who knows it. Ya yeah, basic. No, mom. Ya yeah, basic. And that's okay. This is the take. What do you want our take on next? Thanks so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare offers thousands of affordable classes designed to fit your schedule with short video lessons that you can pause and come back to at any time. Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real personal and professional growth. One Skillshare staff pick you can check out right now is Don Mupasi's class on Cinema 4D. Even if you've never opened the program before, you can take this class, and by the end of it, you'll be able to start creating your own 4D animation. Right now, Skillshare is offering our viewers a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, but that's only if you're one of the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below. So join today and jumpstart your creative journey for less than $10 a month with an annual subscription.